Hello, my name is Lior Alkaim, one of the authors on the following paper titled Deep Brain Stimulation for Pediatric Dystonia, a Meta-Analysis with Individual Participant Data, which is to be published in January 2019's issue of uh, Developmental Medicine and Child Neurology. So before continuing, I'd just like to quickly disclose that there are no actual or potential conflicts of interest in relation to this podcast. So dystonia is one of the most common pediatric movement disorders. It's characterized by a combination of repetitive involuntary muscular contractions resulting in twisting and or abnormal postures. It can and often does have a profound impact on patient and caretaker quality of life. Typically, children and youth are treated with medication. However, medication patients are often uh, refractory to medical treatments and present with higher rates of adverse drug reactions. Recently, there's been an increased emphasis on deep brain stimulation, or DBS, as a treatment strategy for these refractory patients. So we performed a systematic review of literature and meta-analysis uh, evaluating DBS for childhood dystonia uh, to establish its efficacy. We used the updated Albanese classification uh, to stratify dystonia by pathology. We used three electronic databases, PubMed, Web of Science, and EMBase, and collected IPD on dystonic patients under 21 years of age treated with DBS. Primary outcomes of interest were change in BFM DRS or change in BAD scores. Finally, extracted IPD was analyzed using a hierarchical mixed effects model. 72 articles reporting on 321 patients were included. The median follow-up was 12 months and roughly 66% of patients showed clinically significant defined as greater than 20% BFM DRS improvement after deep brain stimulation. When analyzing the results um, stratified by pathology, we can see that patients with inherited dystonia but without nervous system pathology, so these were patients with DYT1, DYT6, or myoclonus dystonia, responded best in the first column on your left uh, with a median improvement of 76.5% uh, postoperatively. Patients with inherited dystonia, but with nervous system pathology, these are patients with pecan dystonia, Leshnian disease, glutaric acidemia, uh, responded significantly worse, uh, the, blue column, uh, the blue column over here, but still clinically significant with 26.8% improvement. Patients with acquired dystonia, these were patients with cerebral palsy, post anoxic injury, post viral, post hemorrhagic, or post traumatic, uh, responded the worst out of all the patients with a median improvement of 10.5% postoperatively. Finally, patients with idiopathic dystonia had a 50.5% uh, median BFM DRS score improvement after deep brain stimulation. So predictors of outcome on multivariable analysis showed that factors that predicted or pretended better outcome after DBS were older age at dystonia onset, inherited dystonia um, without nervous system pathology, patients with idiopathic dystonia, and finally, patients with truncal involvement. In conclusion, this is the first comprehensive meta-analysis evaluating DBS for dystonia in children and youth using the updated Albanese classification. DBS seems to be effective in patients with inherited dystonia without nervous system pathology and in patients with idiopathic dystonia, uh, and to a lesser extent patients with inherited dystonia with nervous system pathology. Factors that pretend better outcome were older age at onset, inherited dystonia without nervous system pathology, uh, in addition to idiopathic dystonia, and finally, truncal involvement. Thank you.